Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. With that, let's head inside the Ford Field in Detroit. We're standing by are the two men who will bring you this one, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. And losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. Leading the charge at quarterback, the former Georgia Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. Well, his ratio was good last week. Most quarterbacks are really excited about a three-to-one ratio, but it's flipped in the wrong direction. <laughs> he threw three interceptions, not touchdown passes, and he only had the one TD pass in that game. So he's trying to turn that around and find a way for his team to win. Oh, he's going to air it. And got his man complete. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, how about a deep ball on the first play from scrimmage, putting that secondary on notice? Brandon, all I remember when I was a player is that we always took a test the night before the game about teams' tendencies and what they what they plan to do. I'm not sure we think deep ball right out of the gate and putting us back on our heels. So how about that game mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking. Liberalize the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. The numbers for James from last week. Seven catches, 57 yards, and a touchdown as well. And I get the feeling that he loves this matchup. I mean, the unit he's going against is in the league against the pass. have circled this one on the schedule and said to himself, this should be a big game. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the face mask quite there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Breaks a tackle. Pushing a foul, roughing the passer, defense. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Throwing is Stafford. Oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. So the ball comes free. It's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield. 
or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Back to throw, Stafford. And he whips that one incomplete there. Kenny Galladay is intended receiver, but now it's third and goal. And we look now at the Lions' offense. And the play of this offensive line is going to be so important in this game because we saw the sack a minute or so ago. They've got to be able to give their guy time to throw. That means communication and being physical is vital. Otherwise, this could be a long game. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. Part of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. So the opening drive does yield maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard into the DNA that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Ryan to the Falcons now come up first and 10, 25 yard line. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. The numbers for Freeman a week ago, 23 carries, 86 yards. After the last game, they had plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're 10 defense, they're not going to shy away from doing what they do best. Make them adjust to them. Make them stop what they do before they go to any type of a changeup. And here's the offense now. Charles, who's the guy you chose to highlight? The tone setter, the guy in the middle, Alex Mack. His return, never good for the opposition. Watch the pass. He's got it. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. Well, so much for picking it up on the ground on third down. Third play of the drive in this defense showing strong early. I wonder how much of that was scouting. I wonder how much of that was a gut feeling like, okay, let's just go ahead and sell out here and get after them thinking they're going to run the football and stuff them early because they've now set the tone. A precedent right here. If you're going to try and run the ball against us, it could be hard going throughout this game. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They begin the drive with Johnson. And they're this one across the 35. They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be have a whole lot of credit and thanking him that much space to rumble. And opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. Brings up second and two at the 45-yard line. Now the former Terrapin, this is Ty Johnson, and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. Against the pass, they're hoping to trend in the opposite direction because right now they're ranked number 26 in the NFL. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. Throwing on second and eight. Stafford, James has got it, complete. And the stop here will come at the third line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. So here's a first and eight. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. That throw good for four. It's second down. 
On second down, Johnson. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Now Stafford. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second. From the gun, here's Stafford. He'll get this one to Galladay. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you're, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And on the first drive, out, I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative, that's what all the guys are looking for. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Ryan going to give to Freeman on the draw. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Uh, third and one, you had the run pass option. Now... Not so much. Yeah, it changes the play call, does And that's probably a big reason why those offensive coordinators laminate their play sheets. You can't just rip them and tear them up when you're angry about something like that. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. Knocking it away there defensively, Justin Coleman. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Lions will take over. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. On your offensive line, line of scrimmage, in this case, that play got bottled up. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. And it's third down. Stafford gives to Johnson on the draw. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, as an offense, you know, some drives you have it, some drives you don't, and this one looks like a you don't. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it was third and long. It was screaming for a pass. I think they tried to outguess him there with the running play. They didn't fool him at all. Went in the wrong direction. Illegal block in the back. Return team. They accept it as it moves the offense backwards. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. 
Here's second and seven now from the 28. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been best. yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. 6 nothing. our score after one. Ryan. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Devon Kennard. He's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. How about that? Three sacks in a game a week ago, and another one right here. Oh, he's feeling it in a big way. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. And they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two drives, one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe something to press it a little bit. This might be the case. On second down now, it's Johnson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end was blocked pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. All right, Stafford. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brady Jarrett, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defense, go with the football. That led to the sack. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. Out of the gun, Stafford. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Tack McKinley, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, <laughs> or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Heading back onto the field, here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit, maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to him when things a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Ryan, and that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. 
What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now it's Ryan. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hit, That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third. Ryan, he's got Sanu, and he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being go. taken down. 23 yards on the play. Here's P. Ryan. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. From the 36, Ryan. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Seven yards there and a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They run. Devontae Freeman. And he is going to lose yardage here. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level first. On second and 12, Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Austin Hooper with touchdown number eight on the year as his guys can now take the lead with the extra point boy it's nice to have that big reliable target you can go to each and every time a lot of people see that position as a fallback throw it to them when all else fails not at all this guy can make plays and that's exactly what he just did yeah play here for a touchdown josh lambeau now for the point after And this one through the uprights and good. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the Falcons score to cap it off. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And right now these guys feel a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the foot and fingers at each other, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together. And second down. It's Johnson. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. The Lions on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and six. And James has it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Stafford 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. Stafford going to give this one off to Johnson. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. 
Single block. Hey, you're on the nine. From just short, Stafford is going to find his running back. It's complete. That one, a first down pickup of eight. From Falcon Territories, first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run it with Johnson. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Throwing on second and eight, Stafford. And that'll be incomplete. Kenny Galladay, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. And the catch made by Johnson. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Now they're set up nicely at the five-yard line after the missed field goal from They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. Ryan. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And in 20 before he's brought down. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. Complete to Jones. And they work five. He'll be stopped at the six. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. I know that's their first connection in this game, but you and I both know that Julio Jones is without a doubt his quarterback's favorite target. Oh, he loves this game. Who wouldn't? Yeah, and the reason that he's that is because of his dependability. And quarterbacks have to have that from their receivers, meaning they know where they're going to be when they're running certain routes. They don't break them on them. They don't change them up and do their own freelance stuff. And, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off with great anticipation. And he will bring it back. An interception return for the Lions touchdown. Charles, I'm looking at you, and understandably, your mouth is wide open in disbelief. What were they thinking? That's going to be one of the great mysteries, but I do know this. When they went out on offense, I will guarantee they told them, don't just make anticipatory throws. Make sure you see it before you throw it. Didn't happen here. Trying to protect that lead, and now they gave it up. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense, fall six, and now the kick is away. This fielded at the... And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. Inside of a minute left, and does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field. 
and the weapons are can he make a play can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball if that's the case i might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out oh it's a screen pass that's complete and they'll bring him down at the 27 yard line now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Throwing again on second down. Ryan Jones has it. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. To throw is Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. Now Ryan on first down. And Jones again, complete. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. Athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, at other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. Here's Jake Elliott. Career long, by the way, for him, 61 yards. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores around the NFL here in a busy week 14. Lastly, let's check on one game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In the game you're watching, it's Matthew Stafford who's had it working in the first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number. The Lions in the lead, and they're going to get the football first. The second half is underway, and no run back here. This will be a touch for the 20-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what is it went well in the first half and wanting more of that? Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. Overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a fifth or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it? But... They'll throw on first down with Ryan. He completes it to Jones. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. 
From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he completes this to Russell Gage. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 10 yards there and a first down for the Falcons. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Julio Jones once again the intended target. And now it's second down. Here's Freeman. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. This defense is continuing to contest deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of half. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 26. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And he slings one that's incomplete. The intended target, TJ Hawkinson, but it'll be second down. Once again, the 26-yard line, second and 10. Stafford dumping it off for Johnson. Seven yards on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Here's Stafford. Hard throw, incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in. Force it, he felt like he needed to make a play. Exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Matt Ryan and the Falcon offense set to get going again. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Devon Kennard in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, most discrediting their work. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. He's got Hooper on the short connection. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring a conversion here on third down. Gets it off to Freeman. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Throwing quickly, that's caught by Sanu. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind Joe on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Devontae Freeman. 
His third touchdown now on the year. And the Falcons have retaken the lead. They've done a good job of holding him down in the first half, but he explodes for a big one right there. Yeah, I've got an image in my head of him being surrounded by a bunch of people, really, with ropes and other things trying to keep him locked in. But eventually they got tired, too. And just as you noted, he broke The guy that usually you can only keep down for so long. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. A game after punting last time to see if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it third down. Stafford on third down. That's to Fulgham complete. And he will have a first they get him to the ground at the 37. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. Stafford now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Here's Johnson, he's been busy this afternoon. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Again, it's Johnson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Let's go. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Remember the last drive, they went three and out. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. On second and seven, Stafford, and his throws go complete. Once more, he was trying to get it to Kenny Galladay, and now it's third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant it a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And this one goes angling out Let's of go, bounds, and go. it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field to help his team build their lead after trailing the spot they're in right now. They have to love it, but as you and I both know, cliche alert coming here. You're only as good as your last possession, but I think that they like, as you said, the spot they're in and how confidently they're playing at this point. Uh, but again, just a one possession lead, looking to expand that now. A big play there on the catch and run. Set of downs first and after roughing the passer. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Caught by Sanu. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. It's a gain of 16, first down Falcons. Ryan now, a perfect 8 for 8 to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. They go play action now, Ryan. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, I mean, they don't care if it was up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. On the counter, Devontae Freeman. 
And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Third and long. It's Ryan. He's got Sanu. And he'll be done, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. Tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. They'll go to Piran, trying to pound it in. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Call it a loss of six on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. Second down and goal. Ryan, this deep run, by the way, they're not top five, but they are top ten. So what's your philosophy here? Do you try and run the ball against a team that's pretty good against the run? What if you're a pretty good running team? If so, you might want to go ahead and run it anyway because that's your strength. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through, and high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And he's up across the 25 out at the 28-yard line. Back onto the field comes the offense. Let's take a closer look at Carrion Johnson. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in three, a game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up. Get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Lions trailing, but with possession of the football as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. The Lions on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and ten. And the blitz does come. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. One possession game. This one not fully over yet. That catch good for five. It's third down. The Falcons on third down. They're right at the average, 40%, four for 10. This time they face a third and two. He's got eight. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. First down would have been nice, but now you get to kick the field goal, still go up two scores. They tried to get it, though, didn't they? Through the pass, got to complete the first down, but you're exactly right. Run the field goal unit out there, kick it, put it through the post, go up two scores. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. 
Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 24. Out of the gun, Stafford. And this one's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And it's second down. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Now Stafford. He gets this one to Johnson. It'll be a gain of nine, and that is going to set up a third and one. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his... Here's a 20th kick. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Now Stafford. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They'll get four there out of the screen, and it's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Throwing a Stafford. And this is incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, here's Stafford. And James has it. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 44-yard line. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, do it. So it's the deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. It's this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. So now second and after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Stafford. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. To the air again, Stafford. Screenplay, Johnson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read there, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down by them. Let's go, let's do this. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and two. Now it's Ryan. Here's Sanu on the catch. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. From the gun on third down, Ryan. He's going to look deep down the field and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the side. 47-yard punt, a return of four. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar. Of too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They're going draw play. Stafford to Johnson. And not much. A yard up to the 29. <laughs> Yeah. 
Throwing on third down, Stafford. It's caught, Jones. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there, 21 yards. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. 50 at Stafford. Looking for his running back. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit, open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Out set to begin their next drive. The Falcons on. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runner. Guys, low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Check it down at four. Ryan and finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in. Difficult for them to hear the snap count. And it's Ryan. Looking left side of man. That's Freeman. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 30. Key Ryan, and this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. One of them in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Now Ryan. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. Here's Matt Bosher now. He's been terrific so far. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Returning here is Wright. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but they're turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Stafford, and his throw here's incomplete. Carry on Johnson, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again, Stafford. And that is incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, and it's third down. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now it's Stafford. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. It was no secret who they were trying to get the football to. Well, the first down, second down, third down, off. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant, and his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. 
That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes. That's exactly that play. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they... Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. That's going to go as a loss of one on first. Fourth quarter. Down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Now Freeman, he's been busy today. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, they'll run with Freeman. Get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Ryan wants to throw it. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Throwing now is Ryan. Going for the deep ball. Oh, wide open, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. But the Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. And the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to the running game. It's Freeman. Down he goes at the 23 of four. Freeman again. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Ryan heads down to a knee, and that should wrap this one up. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. You think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half, the adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So for the Falcons, it's a very important win as they move to 9-4 and four now on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Lions, it's going to all but eliminate them from the playoff picture as they fall to 5-8. and eight. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against... Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.